Hey everyone out there in podcast land. My name is Matt Johnson and I host a show called The Interesting Times from the UK, which looks at the banging your head against the wall thinking happening in UK politics. And my co-host on this podcast, the show puts the A in the USA, host of the Friday Phoenix, which looks at the weirdness of US politics, Andrea Bridges-Smith. Hello, Andrea. Hello there, Matt. Uh, are, are things remaining interesting over there? Not, not boring oh. at all? Oh, yes. Never get boring, which is perfect for a podcast like this and obviously our respective shows. How about in the States? How are things in, over there? Uh, definitely, definitely staying interesting. We have the same amount of interesting that you do. Um, but one thing that we do have, which you do not at the moment, is plenty of produce. Uh, so what exactly is happening with these vanishing veggies over there? Oh, yes. So we have been experiencing shortages in mainland Great Britain of various produce, most notably being tomatoes. And the Environment and Food Secretary, Trees Coffee, said that we should eat more in-season vegetables like turnip. At least Marie Antoinette gave us the option of cake. This <laughs> ready, gray, round, plain, and uninspiring vegetable has been Environment and Food Secretary for the last six months. So the government line is that there are weather problems in Spain and Morocco, where the majority of the UK tomatoes are picked. Cue my Twitter feed going into meltdown, or tomato puree, as our <clears throat> friends from Europe sent us pictures of supermarkets in their countries overflowing with tomatoes. No problem here, they say. Still, you say tomato, we say turnip. I think one thing's clear with the whole Brexit mess, if that's, we should definitely call the whole thing off. But what about the States? Anything odd happening in from that side of the pond? Uh, plenty of vegetables. Uh, happy to send you some if you like. But uh, we have Please. had some weird weather over here as well. Uh, so there was a blizzard in Southern California, which is unheard of. Uh, they almost never get any snow, uh, much less that much snow. Uh, and uh, record executives got a little too excited about it until they found out that it wasn't that kind of snow. So I'm right. sad for them. <laughs> So, Matt, I actually have a conspiracy theory for you, okay? You, you know right. how much America loves a good conspiracy theory, right? Yeah, like sitting on a grassy knoll. Yes, we love knolls. The grassier, the better. Um, my, my conspiracy theory about this vegetable situation, I think this is a government plot to remove all vegetables from the country so that your elected officials can't be compared to them, you know, because I think that Liz Truss lettuce thing really shook them up. So instead of Liz versus lettuce, you might think maybe uh, Cherise coffee versus turnip. What will be next? Rishi versus radish or Tuna versus Satsuma? There you go. Speaking exactly. of our... Yeah, I think that's nice, actually. Either of those could work. Speaking of our unelected prime minister, Rishi Sunak, has pulled off what we in the UK call a bit of a bl blinder. Do you have the phrase bit of a blinder in uh, in the States? No, no. What does that mean? Uh, it's kind of, a, I guess it's sort of like hitting a home run. You do something not just well, but amazingly well, like scoring a three-pointer, is it, from outside you know, that square bit in basketball. I don't know quite how you play the game, but you right. do something I, very well. Yes, I appreciate the sports metaphors. It's very helpful for our Thank American you. audience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's agreed a new deal with the EU over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, before Brexit, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland could trade freely with each other and the rest of the UK as they were all part of the European Union. But then Brexit came along to hand the citizens of Northern Ireland back their sovereignty. So if trading arrangements would be different in Northern Ireland to what they would be in the Republic, then you had to have somewhere to do the checks, right? So you can't have them in the Irish Sea, as that would annoy the Unionists, those in Northern Ireland who want to remain a part of the UK. And you can't have them anywhere between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, as this would now annoy the Nationalists, those that want Northern Ireland to rejoin the Republic of Ireland. As well, of course, as being illegal as it goes against the Good Friday Agreement. I would annoy just about everyone. So Boris Johnson, at a drink stew, mumbled something about everyone, some old nonsense. And everyone said, OK, let's do that, whatever that was. Now, Boris Johnson, of course, the herpes of UK politics, as he never really goes away. He has been using this centuries-old conflict in the same way he's using the Ukraine war, as a means of trying to lever his way back into number 10 and power. What a guy. 
And when he was informed of the fact that this would upset our Jew plug, <clears throat> very special relationship, he was apparently overheard to have said, fuck the Americans. Whereas considering he's fathered something like seven children, I think ought to make all the women on that side of the pond a little bit nervous. Yes, extremely. What's amazed weird. me, though, yeah, not good, not good. What's amazed <laughs> me, though, about the whole thing is just how happy everyone is now that Johnson's gone, as they don't have to deal with him anymore. His total lying just annoyed everybody. The leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, said he loathed Johnson, as did ex-Chancellor the Exchequer, George Osborne, who was a member of the same party as him. Stunat looks more relaxed. The EU President Ursula von der Leyen is beaming from ear to ear. And even King Charles, who was brought in for a photo op, looks like he was about to break into a song and dance. And I'm thinking, that must be what it must be like when you don't have to deal with someone in front of the world's me media and you don't know what they can do or what they might say. It just has to be exhausting. I think you can probably relate to that. Right, Andrea? Uh, yes, there are a number of things there that are very relatable. Uh, we have our own herpes of American politics, and I think we all know mm. who that person is. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> the, America Johnson. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, the the idea of no one liking Boris, but everybody, you know, giving the thumbs up anyway. Uh, there's there's a lot of that over here. Again, we won't say with mm. who. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one, one thing you mentioned, I, I love when politicians do this f big photo op for just doing their jobs. You know, yeah. like the, Rishi Sunak's job is to negotiate things like this. And he did. And he gets to, you know, shake hands and turn toward the camera and smile really big. Matt, at our jobs, no one's throwing us a ticker type parade just for getting through the day. Would right. Be nice. Would be nice. Would be nice. I have to make all of my own ticker tape and throw it myself. I have to blow up my own balloons. I mean, it just doesn't seem fair. Where's the scores of photographers? Where's the, uh -huh. you know, where's the mics? Where's that stand that we have all the mics in front of? Exactly. I want one of those mm. stands with just 15 different microphones in it. That's, <laughs> that's what we should get. So, Matt, one thing I do want to clear up for our American audience. Uh, so, over here, we have one country made up of a lot of states. And your country is one country made up of several smaller countries. You've got an Ireland and a Northern Ireland, which is a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain, just quick as you can, the hundreds of years of conflicts that have resulted in these current five countries that you've got now? Uh, just very mm -hmm. quickly, ideally in three sentences or less. Three sentences or less. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> so we were a load of separate tribes. They got invaded by the Romans. Angles, Saxons, Danes, and Normans from about AD 1 to 1000. And then we thought, hey, you know, this invading thing looks like fun. Let's give it a go. So we had a few practice sessions ourselves. You know, we conquered Scotland, Wales, and Ireland before going further abroad, including going due west to conquer somewhere. I, I can't remember what happened to that place. Never yeah, mind. Me neither. There's a saying in the UK, which I think probably sums it up best. And that's, we used to be a kingdom ruled by kings. Now we are a country ruled by... So, Andrea, any election news? <laughs> uh, right. Uh, always election news, because we're always having an election over here. It's a really fun part of being an American. Um, so the American presidential election is only 20 short months away, man. What? So I hope you've already scheduled your election night watch party and ordered the catering. You don't want to be caught with your pants down on that one. Oh, yeah. I've got my KFC bark and skip and ironically named Diet Coke at the ready. OK, perfect. That's exactly what you should have. Uh, so the way that American elections work is you announce your candidacy and then you get out there and you do a bunch of campaigning. And I'm not sure how you guys do the campaigning over there. But here it's like going to a ribbon cutting ceremony at a dairy plant to give a speech on trade deficits or some such nonsense. Uh, there's a lot of shaking hands and kissing babies, in some cases checking out the teenage girls to see if they might w make good wife material in a couple of years. Uh, is that more or less how you guys do it? Well, your politicians wait a couple of years, do they? Wow. OK, well, we don't campaign until an election is called. Then it's a case of turn up and see if you can remember what the name of your constituency is. 
Yeah, it's it's tough to remember, you know, what city you're in when you're giving a speech and you have mm. to kind of nudge somebody and be like, where the fuck are we? <laughs> um, so, so this current presidential election, which is kicking off, gosh, so early, uh, there's only two candidates who have officially announced that they're running, and that's Nikki Haley and Donald Trump, who loves campaigning, uh, getting up in front of a big crowd to ramble on with whatever thoughts come into your brain and then people clap for you. I mean, that's why I can't wait to do my show in front of a live studio audience. I would love to just ramble Mm. and get clapped at, you know, doesn't that sound nice? But Trump has been mostly absent from the campaign trail, uh, except for last week when he headed over to East Palestine, Ohio, to blame Joe Biden for the toxic trail train derailment that happened there. And also- I didn't realize Joe Biden was a train driver, but there we go. Well, Joe Biden does love trains, uh, but Mm. riding on them, uh, he's an Amtrak guy. He's not, uh, he doesn't have one of those engineer hats, although he'd probably look (laughs) adorable in one. Uh, So while Trump was there, he very helpfully promoted his bottled water brand, um, which I think everyone was super excited about, um, really, really felt the helping from did that. It, did, wasn't it also out of date or something? Didn't I see that somewhere? Uh, yes, there, there was a theory that uh, these were very old water bottles that they had just added new labels to and handed out. So, um, you know, as with all things Donald Trump, check the labels just to make sure. <laughs> Read the small print, absolutely. Yes, uh, always a good idea. Um, He also spent some time buying McDonald's for the first responders there, because why should the toxic chemicals only get to be on the outside of the body? No, (laughs) that's not fair. Uh, And then he just conveniently forgot to mention that a lot of the train regulations kind of targeted towards safety matters were removed by him while he was in office so that the rail companies could make more money. Um, I'm sure that was unintentional, uh, just a innocent little omission. I'll I'll just drop that in. (laughs) So everyone is asking though, you know, Donald Trump is there, why didn't Pete Buttigieg, who is our Secretary of Transportation, head over there first? and it took him a really long time to kind of even comment on this issue and even longer to go and visit. And that's a very fair question asked by people on both sides of the aisle. And I thought about it and I think the answer is that he's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, On the one hand, yes, it's his job to go to places like that. Mm. On the other hand though, even the people who live there don't want to be there. It's not safe. The air could give you cancer, you know? Yeah, uh, I don't want yeah. to go there. Matt, would you go there right now? I, I would be, you would You would have to convince me, I'll, you know, yeah. I would not, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, I, neither of us, I think, are easier, either to uh, <laughs> rush into the breach there. Um, and I think showing up in a full gas mask was not going to calm everybody down, you know? Not like one of those Breaking Bad suits, you know, no, not good, not good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, those those don't inspire confidence. Uh, it, it's kind of like, you know, when, when the pilot has a parachute, that's, you don't want that. No. Not good, not good. Uh, so, you know, East Palestine has this uh, burgeoning, uh, I guess would, we could call it the opposite of ecotourism industry uh, because Erin Brockovich also went over there. Uh, that's kind of Tox- her whole deal. <laughs> Toxic tourism. Toxic tourism, yes, there we go. Uh, very popular. <laughs> we're we're going to create a whole new industry if we're not careful, Matt. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I wouldn't go, still wouldn't go there though. Yeah, me neither. Um, maybe other people want to, but uh, but yeah, Erin Brockovich <laughs> showed up. Uh, that's That's kind of her whole deal. But there was some commentator on Fox News who was upset that Julia Roberts did not go uh, to this site because she played Aaron Brockovich in a film like 20 years ago. It was a very long yeah. time ago. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you know, she, Julia Roberts can't go. Uh, her career depends on her having a pretty face. She can't go melting it off because some Fox commentator gets pissy about it. 
<laughs> yeah, true. Mm. Although Melting Fox and Pissy does sound like Trump's nickname for his kids, possibly. Yes, uh, and those are some of the kinder ones that he's come up with, I'm told. <laughs> um, another favorite nickname of his, Ron de Sanctimonious, uh, who also is in the mix in this presidential campaign. He hasn't officially announced yet, but everyone knows he's going to. And so to prepare for that announcement, he has decided to go all in on the culture war. Uh, the Disney Corporation, liberal arts colleges, uh, which I think we're gonna switch to conservative arts, which will just be like taxidermy or something. Uh, <laughs> the, the transgender student athletes, my God, such a big problem, Matt. Do you have the problem over there that we have here with just the transgender oh, student athletes? Oh, ridiculous. You can't move with transgender student athletes. It's absolutely everywhere, you know. And, oh, and God. You go for a job, there's 10 tra transgender student athletes stood in front of you, so you've got no chance. Just just running track, um, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Passing around the football. It's 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 a nightmare. <laughs> uh, no, we're knee-deep in them. Um, and... Ron DeSantis is going to continue that culture war until the very millisecond that he becomes the party's nominee. And then, Matt, a beautiful thing happens. Do you know right. what happens? No. Okay, so conservatives start out just as fringe lunatic as they can possibly get during the primary season and then once they are confirmed as a nominee they emerge from their cocoon of crazy ass bullshit like a beautiful butterfly as a moderate oh wow. isn't it beautiful wow. just flapping its wings saying no i never said that we should shoot transgender student athletes in the face of course i would never say something like that i am a moderate my god and, and you say, well, I have a video of you doing that right here. You, you can look at your own face saying it. And they're just like, no, mm. no, no. I'm a moderate, honey. I've always been a moderate. I don't know what you're talking about. And we're all just supposed to forget the months of crazy bullshit that they've been spouting. Uh, mm. do, do you guys do that over there? Yeah, a little bit. It's a bit more under the radar. So somebody will say something to somebody and then somebody will get some newspapers. They'll say, didn't you say this? You say, oh, that's papers for you. Printing any old nonsense. And then they get elected. You find out, yeah, they really did think all that, you know. Yeah, it's it's pretty predictable. Uh, mm. Doesn't seem like something anybody should fall so for. But, you know, here we go. Um, one person who is not excited uh, is Paul Ryan, who is a former Speaker of the House. Um, who said he is not going to be coming to the Republican convention if Trump is the nominee in a rare display of backbone from a conservative who doesn't like Trump and then wow. says so. Because wow. much like Boris Johnson over there, no mm. one actually likes Trump, uh, but everybody just goes along with it and says, no, oh, we're great, he's wonderful. Uh, mm. Even though he is universally disliked uh and yeah. you know I, it's weird to be agreeing with paul ryan i don't like that feeling it's an uncomfortable space to be isn't it really it is it is it, mm. it gives me a very weird taste in my mouth um and <laughs> and trump is supposedly angry with fox news now because they're sort of pivoting towards ron DeSantis and away from him and honestly i am upset about that as well uh, again very weird to be agreeing with with Trump on this. Uh, but, you know, this is the party that thinks that women should have to carry their mistakes with him forever. But after uh, gestating and birthing and raising this Trump monster for years, Fox News all of a sudden just wants to be like, nope, someone else's problem now. Nice try, Fox News. Yeah. You yeah. built it, think... you bought it. <laughs> yeah. You think Fox News should uh, adopt him then? Uh, yes, yes, permanently. Uh, fill out the paperwork and you That'll pay for all the therapy that needs to happen, yeah. which is obviously boatloads. If you want to do your business, there's a corner. In, pick a corner, absolutely. Yes, yes, no. absolutely. <laughs> Things are certainly heating up over there. I am sort of impressed that you guys are able to keep up this intensity for that long. I think anything over two months here would have people throwing themselves off tall buildings. All right, well, we're going to change things up a little. We're going to move on to a new section of the show and try and see if we know as much about our countries 
as we like to think. So right. we will be asking each other five questions, five questions taken straight from our respective citizenship tests. Bags, packs, passport at the ready and possible time to plead your case against deportation. Here we go. Would you like to go first or should I go first? Uh, go ahead and hit me with some questions. I'm, I'm ready. All right. Let's have a go. Here we go. These are either going to make a lot of sense or no sense whatsoever. All right. Okay. How many, how many amendments does the Constitution have? I want to say 26. Oh, gosh, I should know this. Is it 26? I can only kind of give you, I, I'm going to give you that one. It's 27. You're only one out. I'm really Oh, impressed. God, I'm, I'm so like, close. I, I wouldn't have a clue. Okay. Question number eight. I'm laughing at this one, but you'll see why, probably. What, excuse me, what did the Declaration of Independence do? Uh, oh, it, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> hmm, how to say this in the most diplomatic way possible uh, <laughs> to to a Brit. Um, it, um, un, it, it consciously uncoupled our two countries. There we go. We'll, hmm. we'll Gwyneth Paltrow that one. <laughs> Well, it, it, three options. I mean, yeah, you've got it, basically. Announced our independence, your independence from us. Declared your independence from us. Said yes. that the United States is free from us. I've got to mm -hmm. say, you're a little bit obsessed with us on, on that one, but never mind. Skip that, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> All right. What looming are large, two yes. rights? Sorry? That you guys are definitely looming large in that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? I've got this one. This is good. Okay. Uh, the uh, right to free speech and right. the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Bingo. There we go. You got all three. That's fantastic. Yes. Uh, now, this is a very weird question. I'm reading this actually for the first time. This is going to be tricky, but let's go with it. Okay. What is freedom of religion? <laughs> a lost art? Um, no. Uh, freedom of religion <laughs> basically says anything that has to do uh, with the laws, um, you know, uh, anything done by the state uh, cannot be forcing a religion onto people. Um, yeah. That everyone gets to do whatever religion they want. Um, and uh yeah that's that's what it means you give me a very um, full answer uh, i'll be honest it's a lot fuller than the answer i've got here it oh simply dear. says i mean you're right it does you said the same thing and um you can practice any religion or not practice a religion so especially what you said gotcha um and final question what is the economic system in the united states unchecked capitalism baby <laughs> correct correct <laughs> You got any of them wrong um that's fantastic i'm a bit nervous Sweet. now i'll be honest but there we go all right uh yes. it looks like i get to stay here that's that's good <laughs> all my stuff's here i got so my passport that... here here we go okay good good okay uh question number one i wish i had some dramatic music to play um which <laughs> shakespeare play contains the line to be or not to be and I can give you the choices if you'd like. It, it, I, we can do this multiple choice, or you can just. Uh, no, I, I should it. know this as an actor. I'm both a sort of be or not to be. As a <laughs> question, what is? I, 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 this is shocking. This is shocking to be or not to be. Do you want the choices? Will that help you narrow yeah, it down? Yeah, please give me the choices. Oh dear. Okay. Yes, please. Romeo Sorry. and Juliet, Henry V, yeah. Macbeth, or Hamlet. Hamlet. Hamlet? Let's yeah. see. I should have gotten these uh, closer. Yes, Hamlet, you are correct. I would have thrown so... myself out in the UK if I got that wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So far, you still get to stay there. That's good. Um, <laughs> what year was the United Kingdom established? That's a question. Crikey. It is. Um... <laughs> And again, I can give you the choices if that's helpful. Well, I, is it, did it follow the Union of, the Union of, uh, I think, uh, the Union Treaty, essentially, where England joined Scotland, or did it come down to when England basically took over Ireland? 
That's a, such a sort of weird one because the United Kingdom has gone through quite a few. Okay. The United <laughs> Kingdom that we know today yeah. kind of dates back to 1916, but I don't think that's the answer that they're after. It's not. So, yeah, give, give, me, give me the options, please. Thank okay. you. 1677, 1687, 1697, or 1707? Okay, that's uh, weird because all the 16 seems to suggest they, they took the United Kingdom from when we aligned ourselves with Scotland, which was. I think it was 1687. That is incorrect. It's 1707. Ah. Oh, really? Red herring. Oh, okay. Well, I, I wouldn't have even got close to that. I was convinced it was 16 something, but there we go. <laughs> Uh, I, I just have to say, you guys have a very rich history. It sounds like there's been a lot going on over there, border-wise. They really have. They really have. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's fun. That's fun. Okay. Question number three. What happened yeah. in the year 1400? We're taking it way back. Year 1400? 1400. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think he was on the throne. Uh... <laughs> I don't suppose this is multiple choice, is it? It is. These are all multiple choice. Uh, okay. Option A, England lost the Hundred Years' War. Option B, the Romans invaded England. Option no. C, England replaced Old French in Parliament and the Royal Courts of England. Or D, the no. Battle of Hastings. Oh, it's A. A. It's A? Okay, let's see. Let's see if you're right. No! No? It's C. That's when the English replaced Old French in Parliament and the Royal Courts of England. Oh, I see. Right, right. Okay. I'm doing very badly here. This is, this is appalling. Um, can I recommend something that will help? What? <laughs> Answers to the questions? Uh, no. If your country has only been around uh, a couple hundred years, it really shortens the amount of stuff that you've got to know. Yeah. Maybe look into that. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Question number four. I, I, feel, I feel good about this one, Matt. I feel like you've got this one. Okay. What was the name Me. of the first prime minister? Oh, um, Walpole, Robert Walpole. Correct. See, I knew you had that one. Good, good job. All right. <laughs> and finally, uh, when do young people get their national insurance number? It's before one of their birthdays do you know what age right before that yeah, well they get their national insurance number I, I mean i got mine pretty well straight away as soon as you're born isn't it i thought it was oh that's a really question I'm, I, I'm pretty sure because my mum made me rec um remember my national insurance number and i remember thinking if i wasn't still at school it was not long after i gone certainly before we were certainly before we were 18 let me put it that way absolutely um okay so before the 18th birthday? Yes. I mean, it might be before, uh, definitely before then and before the 16th. What are the options? Uh, 15th, 16th, 17th or 18th birthday? I'm going to go for 15th. I thought, uh, genuinely, I thought it was, uh, you know, as soon as you were born, really, essentially. But I remember uh, remembering mine as a child. So it, here's another thing. I'm of an age where things have just changed as well. I mean, the... Uh, <laughs> You know, money has actually changed during my time. So things that I remember aren't necessarily the case as they are now. 16th, I'm going to go before the 16th birthday. How about that? That is correct. Great choice. <laughs> Only because I was just, I'm pretty sure that I remember mine uh, before then, but who knows, maybe I'm just being, um, you know. <laughs> wow, three out of five, not very good at all. I've got, I have to say as well that, and I think it's clear, I did no revision whatsoever for that test. You're going to tell me that you didn't either, but you did a lot better than me. So there we go. Well, again, I have uh, way less history to remember. Uh, <laughs> the, when I saw a question about the 1400s, I was like, oh, gosh. Um, mm. I mean, I know America, you know, was here in the 1400s and people were on it, uh, but they don't really make us learn about all that stuff. Um, <laughs> probably should. But it's okay. It's not going to come up in the uh, citizenship test. So you're fine on that regard. Exactly. Citizenship test. We just want to know when did the white people show up and what were they up to? That's basically the <laughs> gist of it. 
Absolutely. All right. Well, Matt, um, I, I think uh, I, I guess we're both going to stay put. Um, questions aside, yeah. um, but I, it has been so nice to catch up with you, and, and you. Uh, yeah. we would like to thank all of our listeners out there. Um, if you would like to hear more from us, uh, subscribe to the podcast, and we will reach your ears on a regular basis with uh, transatlantic news. And if uh, you would like even more than that, uh, please go see Matt at The Interesting Times UK on YouTube. And mm -hmm. you can come and see me on the Phoenix News Network at Phoenix News Network, and that's F-E-N-I-X uh, News Network on YouTube to, to catch the Friday Phoenix every Friday. Uh, Matt, always good to talk to oh, you. Okay. Absolutely. And to say if you guys have any questions as well, I, I would say I'll do my best to answer them after that last display. <laughs> yeah, anything <laughs> you'd like us to talk about, you know, hit upon, then I'm sure we can we can do that as well. Yes, please put it in the comments. If you uh, have some issues that you'd like for us to cover, we're always interested to hear what you're interested in. And mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, thanks very much and cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.